Patrick, the Odyssey Symposium is always, you know, the most looked forward to event of the Odyssey calendar. And this year, certainly another great event, four days. Uh, the two main days, we had two really interesting plenary sessions. And I think it'd be great to talk about both individually. Uh, the day one, we really looked at Odyssey's impact on the COVID-19 pandemic. What really stood out to you uh, from that session? Well, I was really excited to see the culmination of all the work that's been going on over the last 18 months really come together into a series of presentations that really showed both the breadth and the depth of what our community has has contributed to the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, we had a series of presentations talking about methodologic research that has been conducted within our community, really establishing the scientific basis to allow us to characterize disease, understand the background rates, and understand methods performance for allowing us to do research such as vaccine safety surveillance. And then, and then it was really great to see not just that we're doing um, good scholarship, but also see the clinical impact of the evidence that we've been generating, to see presentations about how our inf information that we've generated as a, a network has contributed meaningfully to decisions made by regulatory authorities, by providers, and to see that evidence cover covering not just COVID disease natural history, but now as we evolve into treatments and the vaccines for COVID-19, seeing that our real world evidence we're generating is having a real impact. Following that plenary and those great presentations, it was really exciting to see some leaders within the healthcare community uh, react to, to what they heard. Uh, what stood out to you about that? Yeah, it was really great to have external perspectives share a voice about not only the impact that the Odyssey community has had, but also provide us some very clear visions of where we need to go together as a community. And what we heard from the voices from the FDA and EMA was about the need for us to continue to maintain a strong rigor in the science we're doing and making sure that quality is of utmost importance. Um, but we also heard from an industry perspective and an academic perspective about real clear open questions that are out there that observational data is probably going to be um, the, the best, if not the only source of evidence to really inform important decisions. So I'm really excited to take the, the wisdom that we got from our panel uh, and actually bring that back to the community as we start to establish a research agenda moving forward for COVID. So day one really reflected on 18, 19 months of Odyssey work and, and day two, the plenary really was about three days, three intensive days of, you know, we called it the journey to reliable evidence, and it included the the first ever reproducibility workshop uh, that that took place the Monday during the symposium. Can you just talk about this the entire community event and and what you think we learned from it? When we think about our desire as a community to generate reliable evidence, we really need to critically examine what does it mean to be reliable. And we've talked as a community about the attributes of what makes for reliable evidence. But we haven't necessarily worked as a community to try to strive to achieve those objectives together. And so I was really excited about the opportunity to try to reproduce Yasser al study that was published in Diabetes Care, to go through this journey as a community and trying to take that study and reproduce it, but also to think about how we could standardize that study, run it across a network of databases and generate evidence. And what was really excited about our second plenary session was not only to share the evidence that we generated as a community, but also to see how that evidence was able to meaningfully inform and change people's perception about the reliability of the evidence and to change how it could actually impact clinical decision making. And I think that what we learned in that plenary session really can serve as a model for how all of us as a community can think about the rigor of the science we pr produce and think about how we can generate evidence that can be even more impactful than the work we've done in the past. You know, I thought it was really important at the end that this, you know, the the work on reproducibility didn't end at the symposium. We had the, the terrific announcement from David Madigan that the Rue Institute was going to uh, start up the Odyssey Reproducibility Service. What can what can that do for the community? I think it's a, a really landmark occasion that uh, the Rue Institute at Northeastern University announced that they're starting this reproducibility service as an opportunity for us to take the, the scientific lessons that we've gained as a community to try to uh, bring those into a dedicated resource that not just the Odyssey community, but the entire research enterprise can take advantage of. I think what we learn from the science is that 
evidence will be more reliable if it follows the Odyssey best practices uh, and it is applied across our Odyssey network, but it really requires institutional uh, investment to make such a service available. So I'm really uh, excited and, and, and proud to see the work that uh, David Madigan, Kristen Koska, Christian Rice, and the entire uh, Rue Institute team are bringing to our community. I think it's really going to change the game of how we can generate credible evidence. Of course, one of the favorite parts of, of every Odyssey Symposium is the Collaborator Showcase. Uh, I, I was really excited to see how it went with GatherTown. It was clear that people really connected more. They networked more, um, you know, certainly than last year. That was something that a lot of people brought up, and, and I thought it was really successful. But the scientific uh, research that was presented, I thought was really groundbreaking and, and really a, a show of, of the work that this community has done over the last year. Yeah, I had a lot of fun during the Collaborator Showcase in, in GatherTown. You know, it's difficult for us to be able to figure out how to be together uh, in this virtual world where we're all remote, but I thought GatherTown provided a great opportunity for engagement uh, across all of our key areas. And so in those GatherTown rooms of data standards, methods research, open source development, and clinical applications, we had an opportunity to bring people together to, to share posters, lightning talks, uh, in software demonstrations. And one of the things that I, I actually took away from that was that there was a, a lot of research that was being done still in pockets of our community where the, we, we identified real opportunities for collaboration. And it was great to see different folks coming together and um, engaging in meaningful conversations. And I really hope that not only did people learn from the science that was shared, but that this is gonna be the, the starting point of new science that can be generated uh, as a community effort moving forward. You know, whether you were able to make the symposium or not, uh, all of these presentations are available now on the Odyssey website. Everything from the two plenaries, the state of the community address, a really memorable uh, closing talk from from Jamie Weaver. Uh, you know, the, the lightning talks, the posters, the software demos all available on odyssey.org. It was a uh, it was a great event. And I think something that you can really still kind of go back to and learn a lot and, and really just get a sense of, of the breadth of work being done. So it was a great event. Uh, thank you to everybody who, who took part in it and, and made it a really uh, a really special event. And, and now we move forward and start thinking about 2022. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Craig.